What's up guys, this is Nick from Supermoon Studios. I'm here to do a quick little tutorial with you today. If you saw our video last week, you saw we have a new YouTube intro that we put together. I actually put that together entirely by hand. We didn't pay someone to do that. So basically I'm gonna show you how I did it. I wrote some original music for it in Logic Pro X. All of that was original as well. I didn't use any samples for that. So if you wanna stay locked in, get ready and I'll kinda show you how I did all that in Apple Motion 5. So that was the intro right there. If you did miss the upload last week, I made all of that in Apple Motion 5. I made the music in Logic Pro X. I made it all originally. I didn't use any sampling, like I said. I use all of the Apple production platforms. I use Final Cut Pro. I use Logic Pro X. I use Motion 5. I did have access to the Adobe Creative Cloud when I was completing my undergrad, but when I graduated last year, I, I lost my subscription. So Zach actually has his own Creative Cloud subscription that we're splitting down the middle right now. I couldn't fit anything on my computer. Uh, I was having some computer issues and some storage issues, which I actually fixed yesterday. So we will have some Premiere tutorials coming, some After Effects tutorials, but I did make this in Apple Motion 5. You can make a very similar version in any motion graphics production platform, definitely After Effects, you might even be able to make something better. It all depends on your skill level and how familiar you are with the platform, but Apple offers a great bundle for students and anyone in the education system. It's only about 200 bucks to get Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro X, Compressor, Motion 5, and Main Stage. And Final Cut Pro itself is more than that, so it actually is worth it. I had already bought Final Cut Pro because I was using it in a class, so then I looked into it, saw that I could get the rest of them for only about 200 bucks while I was still in school, and I, you just really can't beat that for all of these really powerful programs. So I picked that up last year before I graduated, and now that is what I mainly work on. I'm not a fan of the subscription model of the creative cloud but like i said zach does have a subscription that we are now splitting now so we will have some more creative cloud tutorials coming soon just for now like i said i made this in apple motion 5. so to start i'm just going to open up an empty file in motion 5. if you can't see what i'm doing that's because i have two screens i'm only recording one of them right now so everything that you don't see is happening off screen so I'm just gonna open an empty project file. It's gonna be 4K, 60 frames per second, or 59.94, and we're just gonna open it up right there. So to get started, you would import your logo or whatever it is you're trying to make the intro of. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use this Batman symbol that I found online. So basically, make sure it's a PNG, make sure there's no background to it because we are gonna be working with the background. So just make sure it's a clean image, make sure, I, I used white, you can use any color that you want, but I'm gonna be using white for this tutorial as well. So just get your image in there and we can basically get started. All right, so from there, what you're gonna wanna do is click on your group and make sure 3D group is active so we can look at it in 3D space. Then you're gonna wanna go up to the object menu and add a camera so that we can orbit around it and check it out. All right, and basically I'm just gonna orbit to the side so we can look at it a little bit. So once you have it in 3D space and you have it all set up, basically we're gonna extrude this out. There's a few ways you could do that, but the way that I used it was probably the hardest and most annoying, so be aware for that. Basically, we're gonna take this image and we're just gonna duplicate it a bunch of times. I did it 40 times, so for the sake of this tutorial, maybe we'll cut it off a little bit earlier than that but then you're gonna to wanna to go into each of these images and you're gonna to go to the properties menu and where you see the uh, X, Y, and Z axis in the position window, on the Z axis, just give it any kind of distance from the first image. So for that graphic I actually did, I did it in quarter pixels. So basically I moved it something like 0.25 and then you move up to the next image and you move it out 0.5, up to the next image and you move it out 
this one would be one. And basically what that's gonna do is when you look at your image from the side now, it'll have a little bit of thickness to it. It's gonna take a little bit of while to show because it is just one pixel right now. I did do 10 pixels for the actual graphic, so we'll see how far we get there. So I'll probably skip through this in the editing anyways. It, it does take a little bit of time to do, but this stuff isn't easy. If it was easy, uh, everyone would be doing it, basically. It takes a lot of time. So from there, we're gonna duplicate it a few more times. Find our last one. So 1.5, oops, there it is. So it's 1.5, so we'll do 0.75, two, 2.25, 2.5, and then three. So yeah, so as you can see, it's starting to look a little bit thicker now. And uh, we're just gonna do that until there's 10 pixels. So I'll see you then. All right, so that might be enough for the tutorial. I just put it out to five pixels. That's gonna be about 20 of these images. For the actual intro I put together, I did 10 pixels, so it would take about twice as long, but just for the sake of getting things done. So basically from there to make that melting effect of having it come through another image, I just made a rectangle over it. So let's go to the front view. Let's uh, go back to our actual image. We'll come in a little bit. And then I'm gonna hit the rectangle tool so that it makes its own shape. And I'm just gonna draw a rectangle over our image like that. So I'm actually gonna drag this out into its own group as well. We're gonna close this group up and we're gonna lock it for now. So basically, if you look at this thing, you can orbit around it. It'll be a rectangle on top of that shape you had. If you grab that group you made from before and unlock it, you can move the whole group around on its own. So if you use the Z axis, you can see there it is. So gonna undo that. And basically from there, we're just gonna add some camera work and some animations for it. So it was, uh, this is where you can be creative. You can kind of do whatever you want. For me, I chose some of those views to kind of show it off. Uh, if you switch it to active camera, it'll show you exactly where your camera is looking. So when you export it, this is what you're going to be seeing. So I'm going to do this up real quick and kind of give us an interesting angle. And you can use the properties tab to make it a little bit easier on yourself for actually rotating and moving the camera around. Like I said, this is where you're gonna be creative on your own and getting kind of your own camera angles. Uh, it's a little hard to see because there's less of a actual outline than the logo that I used. But from there, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this at zero. We're gonna add a keyframe, come out a little bit and we'll just have it come up to 10. Oops, negative 10. So it's a little bit hard to see this. So what I'm gonna do from here and what you guys are probably gonna wanna do as well is add a light. So this point light, if I take a look at it, you can position this light anywhere you want. I'm just gonna try and find my logo, which is on this side. There we go. All 
All right, there you go. You can see that a lot better now. So if we go back to our active camera, be a lot closer. There we go. All right. So like I said, from there you'll see because of those keyframes you added, the logo itself is going to kind of pop through the image. I didn't chop our file length, so this is going to be a little bit slower, a little bit longer. I did doctor up kind of what we did in Final Cut Pro once it was done. But yeah, that's basically how I made this extrusion, how it comes through that rectangle and how this animation works. So from there, you just kind of do your own camera work. So what I did was I started with the camera at this position. We add a keyframe. You're going to go down to the timeline until it's poking out. And from there, you're going to add another keyframe. So if you play this back, it'll move while it extrudes itself. Like I said, it was a little bit faster in my original animation, but this is just a good tester. And then from there, what you're gonna wanna do is you're basically just gonna keep adding new cameras. So once that animation is over, we're gonna add another camera. Move this over to here. This camera will put in a completely different spot. My second shot, was straight on so all right and so from there like i said you're just going to put it in any position you want we'll probably start over here add a keyframe there move to the end and then move your keyframe over. Now you are gonna have to keep repeating these extrusions with the object itself, because as you can see, it is already poked out all the way through the rectangle. So what I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna grab the group itself. We're gonna go to where this camera starts. I'm gonna add a keyframe, put this back to zero. And then to where the camera ends, we're just gonna make it go back out to negative 10. So that you do get this extrusion every single time you're panning. Something like that. A little bit faster, but again, I did edit this up in Final Cut Pro once it was done. So with those two shots done, I can kind of show you what I did with the lighting. First off, I grabbed this light. We'll find it up here. I pulled it in pretty close so that I kind of spotlit what we were looking at. You're gonna add a keyframe to the light as well. You're gonna go to the end of your clip or the end of your camera and you're gonna just push that out. So that basically all three of these motions are happening at the same time. You have the logo poking through, you have the camera panning and the light moving as well. So that's kind of what it looks like right there. Like I said, my computer might be chugging a little bit. Uh, it is a little bit older now and this is a little bit longer of an animation than I had made, but uh, that's basically what it's gonna look like. As you see, because there's another keyframe there, it's gonna sync back in at the end of this. But all I did was in Final Cut, I just chopped that and kind of edited it by hand there. All right, so basically from there, we're just gonna add another light here. Uh, like I said, this is where you're gonna be kind of creative on your own, but this is exactly what I did. I split this light so that I had it. And when it's coming over here, I started it over here, down in the corner. Made it a little bit closer than it was. So make sure you're in properties, add that position, and then go to the end here. And we're just basically gonna move it over here and move it up to the corner. So when that is done 
you'll see now we have that animation going across. And again, this is a little bit cruder than what I actually did, but this is basically all I did. I just did a few more angles, a few more lighting configurations, and from there, I just dropped it all into Final Cut Pro, cut it all together, put it on time with the music, and that's basically it. So the hard part is extruding the object and having it come through the rectangle. But once you have that animation down, you basically just need to play around with the camera work and the lighting, so. All right, guys, and like I've been saying this whole time, after I was done making the animation, I actually dropped it into Final Cut, and I made sure I retimed it all for the music I had made. As you can see here, I used very similar angles. There's the, there's the light animations. It's extruding through that layer that I had made. I added a little fade in here. This first clip, I added some bloom to make sure that spotlight really, really made it look like it was melting. The second shot, I added kind of a little uh, aura in the background to make it look a little bit smoother, like it was actually coming out. Just a little bit of tweaks and tricks here to make it look a little bit more pleasant on the eyes. This third one, I added some focusing in when I zoomed in on the super moon. I didn't have any text for the Batman symbol, obviously, so I'm not gonna do those shots. Like I said, that's where you can be creative and kind of make it your own. So I added a little focusing here so you see mostly just the words going by. And then of course, this last shot, I actually slowed down quite a bit and uh, added this extra bokeh effect so it really kind of gives it a little bit more style, a little bit more flavor, makes it look a little bit more professional, a little bit more fun. And then this last shot here, all I did for this last shot, I'm not gonna show you in motion. It took me a little while to get it perfect, but I just started with the logo facing away, flipped it around with a keyframe and made sure the camera pulled in with some keyframes and added a little bit of a wriggling effect so you get that extra, dramaticism to it there's some point lights on this as well so that you could tell it's 3d so again all together i just added some extra shots timed it together made some clips a little bit slower a little bit faster to make sure it all synced up with the music i had made so if you guys have music that you're making yourselves or music that you got from somewhere or paid someone to make you it makes it a little bit easier to get these animations down pat and then you just export the whole file cut it up in an editing software and make sure it's all on time make sure it looks exactly how you want it and you can always add these little extra effects like this bokeh i was trying to add a little lens flare but i felt like this made it look a little bit more fun so i'm gonna end the video there Hope you guys enjoyed it. This has been an Apple Motion 5 tutorial from Supermoon Studios. If you guys have any questions, please throw them in the comments. Please like, share, and subscribe if you liked it. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Check out our website if you want to book a quote. And that's basically it for me today. I'm sorry if this feels a little bit rushed, but it is kind of a simple little tutorial that I just wanted to share with you guys. I just finished this up last week, so uh, it does take quite a bit of time to get exactly what you want because you're gonna be doing it all on your own. You're gonna be looking at it creatively in your own head. So framing up these shots and getting these lights perfect is gonna take a little bit of time. It took me a little bit of time, but that's basically it. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.